Welcome back everybody and if you're new to the channel welcome uh, if you take time out after you see this video to have check out the rest of our content if you like it please subscribe because it helps us out immensely okay, I'm getting straight uh, into it I want to say a big thank you to PPD Performance they've been kind enough to lend us uh, this equipment to make all these series of videos possible so if you've got any recovery items that you want to purchase or you need uh, make sure you go and see them. They have not only what we have here in part of our testing, but they've got other options as well. So um, go and check them out either in store, give them a call online, uh, and let them know you're coming from us and they'll help you out. Now, uh, just before I get started on, on the difference between soft shackle and bow shackle, just a quick um, disclaimer that I put across a few of these videos just to make sure that you understand that uh, with recovery, particularly with recoveries, a little bit on recovery equipment itself there's sometimes some commentary around it I just want to be into your aware that uh, everything that I state not only comes from my own experience more importantly it has been fact checked and sourced through reliable um, peer-reviewed information which I then am able to link and provide you so that you can verify those sources and see where all this information comes from so if there's anything in here you disagree with um, or you think that's wrong, you're welcome to make a comment as long as you've got that source information we can check and fact check against where we get our information from because uh, we want to make sure that that's all correct and what we're putting online is valid rather than just uh, a statement about um, something so it needs to be something we can check out if I miss something, uh, because I, I go through this with a lot of content um, and it's important, by all means make a comment I'm happy to, to hear those sorts of things if that happens Okay, so getting stuck in straight into it, um, bow shackle and soft, and soft shackle, that's what we're looking at, the technical comparison between the two. So soft shackles here, uh, real quickly, uh, these are the same sort of rope that you use in um, your rope winches nowadays. Uh, they are very strong, they are actually in weight to strength ratio around about 8 times stronger than a steel cable. Uh, obviously more flexible and versatile than a steel cable uh, and when it comes to its uh, breaking and so forth uh, this does, the way it's designed is designed so it breaks uh, in, in, a, in a certain way like because it's the way it's designed it breaks one direction or the other it doesn't splinter like a wire one wheel uh, they're very abrasion resistant uh, the UV resistant although you shouldn't leave it out in direct sunlight you don't want to put it at any chance where you're reducing the lifespan of this um, it is obviously it floats it's coming from a maritime like this is generally the mar maritime usage uh, primarily comes from uh, like a lot of sailing and yachts use these ropes uh, because of the, the, the water aspect of these like they repel water they are um, slightly waxy feel to them and they repel water uh, and they're one of the strongest ropes possible so this is why this is often used in that scenario and they've become more of a commonplace scene in forward driving now more recently than anything you'll often find combos now coming out with soft shackles and, and kinetic ropes that uh, traditionally you'll see bow shackles and uh, snap straps together more often than not so these things you generally have to buy separately now these are made from um, the acronym and both the long wording is kind of a mouthful and pronunciation can be a bit difficult for me but there's a te technically there's a trademark brand it's called Dynemia and that's, um, that's some brands actually have that as their ropes that they use um, Ironman because we're stuck with the same brand to keep consistency across the board for our testing um, they don't use the Dynemia um, trademark brand rope but they use the same uh, what's called uh, ultra high molecule weight uh, polyethylene um, which is the same uh, technical and physical um, basically identical uh, to Dyneema it's just that that's, this is the same way it's made it's just like a generic version if, for example for your, if your medicine um, you pay for a branded one versus generic, same stuff, it does the exact same thing. It's made from the same process, so it's just um, what it's called. So they use that, um, that's what Ironman uses, is that version, which is the um, 
process of using this is another big funny word, but it's uh, let's see if I get it right. Uh, polyol polyol polyolfin. That's it. Got it right finally. Polyolfin fibers. So it comes from polyolfin fibers. Goes through a process which we don't really need to go through, but I can provide links if you're interested. Um, goes through that process, and what happens is it turns those fibers. Um, into extremely long um, chains of overlapping polyurethane um, uh, uh, ropes that uh, basically then um, are all in the same direction and weave together to create a, a very strong or one of the most strongest ropes available. So they are um, both UV resistant, uh, abrasion resistant, they are uh, water resistant. Um, water does not affect their performance at all. Um, as I mentioned, comes from a uh, maritime background, using a lot of yachts and stuff, and that's uh, where we sort of get them from. Um, now started being used in, in our recovery gear. So one piece construction uh, means that if you're using it in any sort of, uh, especially if you're not prepped for any uh, situation that comes along, that's water or, or particularly water related or mud related if you drop a pin or something like that from your steel shackle um, that'll drop and sink you might not find it again if you do that you've lost that one you can't use it whereas this is one piece if it drops it'll float and I'll keep working simple design um, this is the lower strength one 14,000 um, minimum breaking strain this one's 17,500 kilogram breaking strain made both out of 12 strands uh, the abbreviation is UHM uh, WPE sounds almost as long as saying the whole word but it's 12 strand of that this one is a class 2 diamond knot this one's just a single strand uh, 12, 12 single strand uh, rope with a diamond knot at the top that's why this one post 3 is a different type of uh, class of knot that's why this one is the stronger version of the two it has a protecting covering to help with the abrasion issues um, because if this is on particularly front recovery points that are not smooth and just smooth like say your bow shackle is um, it can cause abrasion to happen so the sleeve helps protect the rope and gives you a lifespan you need out of your soft shackle so you're getting the life that you need give you an idea um, in, uh, well first of all uh, the main reasons people mostly go for these nowadays is uh, weight and, and safety so those are the two big keys that most people go for um, weights obviously they're very light uh, with carriage I don't think it's a big issue because two bow shackles don't really add a lot to your payload it's more just around when you're trying to put them on uh, as part of your recovery um, holding a shackle and, and putting everything through and then trying to do the pin without dropping stuff can sometimes be a little bit harder if they weigh a bit more not that it's impossible it's just sometimes it's easy to do it with these um, and it's one piece so that means uh, if you do drop it in the water or mud it's going to float and you can still use it um, regardless one end you've got an eyelet the other end you've got the knot all you do is you open up the eyelet and you put the uh, knot through them you can slightly tighten the eyelet and the simple part of this is all you need to do is know is that the top knot portion of it goes pretty much in the middle and your recovery point your strap goes to either end and that's how it connects when it flies strain uh, tension sorry this tightens up for the with any recoveries you look at the weakest point and any equipment you look at the weakest point of that item scientific testing conducted on these found that um, the weakest point is either the knot or the kink in the rope um, and they fell on those tests they found that it failed less than 10 to 12 percent of the time of um, in comparison to the rope or the strap so they'll fail less than that uh, they will fail and if anything uh, they found the majority of the cases in actual fact the knot will slip out more often than anything else so um, that's some of the keys with that give you an idea about price because that's one of the cons that a lot of people list for example the uh, standard this was 4.75 ton shackle cost you roughly 20 bucks these 14,000 kilos is roughly 50-55 um, the 7.5 is roughly 60-65 from what I remember just to give you an idea so it's no huge jump in price difference 40 bucks for 
soft shackle over a bow shackle I don't think is a huge massive issue um, and for what you're getting out of them um, I think that they're worth it. Uh, the fact that uh, they have their uses um, like for example if, you, if I was to have a soft like a notch rounded um, recovery point I would use a soft shackle uh, if I didn't and I had a sharp one I'd use a bow shackle if I'm connecting two ropes together um, two or two straps together yes I'm aware you can use it with a DIY version or with a particular you can buy items that actually stick in between them but if you don't if you've got a soft shackle you can use that um, importantly if you're using an equalizer strap and you're connecting those to your two front recovery points and then connecting that to a strap using a soft shackle is what you're going to have to use you don't want to use a bow shackle anywhere in that scenario because the weakest link in all of that is one of the straps or ropes and if they fail it's going to send this thing flying um, and that safety issue that's the key is because if this goes flying because of the lightweightness to it and the fact that it doesn't return or it doesn't stretch that much and when it does fail um, as these are all in the same direction it's going to go in one direction depending on where it goes like tears or breaks um, so it generally goes in the same direction so it doesn't go widely flying uh, and if that goes flying the risk of injury or, or damage to your vehicle is a lot less than say this flying hunk of metal going through the air hopefully there's no no bystanders but uh, if there is that could cause serious injury or death to somebody not to mention if it hits your car so I saw some real serious damage so um, that's so some of the big, two big factors most people will quote as to why they go for the soft shackle uh, I think they have their purpose in, in our kit um, they have their uses as I mentioned a uh, couple of ones the other ones are with uh, wet scenario, uh, sorry, water and mud scenarios uh, if you don't prep your stuff prior to going in um, for whatever reason or if you're unfortunate enough to be stuck in something where you didn't realize you were going to be in that situation I'd probably grab out my soft shackles first because the last thing I want to do is accidentally drop um, one of the pins or the bow part itself it goes thinking I lose it because um, if I don't have a replacement I'm kind of stuck um, in that situation so they do have their place in your gear the bow shackle uh, has been around for a long time. If you go, like I said, with um, if you're looking at kits and stuff, more often than not, uh, you're going to see kits with the bow shackle on a strap. Um, you're starting to see more kinetic ropes and soft shackles together. Oh, and the soft shackles that come in their nice little bags, by the way, before I move off them. Um, and if they get sand or mud in them, just give them a clean rinse with um, uh, clean water and uh, let them dry out out of direct sunlight and then put them in their bag and they'll last you you know, the time that you need them for so your bow shackle a bit different they have instead of a minimum braking strain they have what we call a working load limit and as we're sticking with all um, Ironman products to make sure our testing is consistent um, we know that Ironman have uh, they test their equipment according to a strain standard um, and we have what we call a working load limit of on this one we have a 4.75 ton working load limit now if you're getting uh, cheaper brands and stuff they might not test them because they have what we call a safety factor so on a good branded item um, you should have a safety factor of around about five to seven times um, the working load limit so this shouldn't break anywhere up to 20 tons um, if it's been quality checked and it's done it's, uh, you know it's an actual quality product that's why it's important to probably verify some of that information wherever you can to make sure the safety factor is in excess of what your working load limit is to make sure this does not fail um, both shackles of a big same shape and technically yes we should always recover from directly in front or behind it does give you the ability to um, recover uh, from multiple angles but just be aware that you get your full rating directly like this when you move 45 you get only 70 percent of the strength of the shackle and when you're on a 90 degree angle you get 50 percent so you're actually halving the amount of strength that's actually available so uh, even though you can do it and I have done it because I need to move someone from a position they're wearing onto the harder surface there's no point moving and forward and back it's not going to recover them 
I need to move them down so they were on a 45. So I lose strength doing that. So it's something to be aware of when you're doing this. As well as they, when they're rated, they're rated in the horizontal, this vertical position, sorry. So they're rated like this. Um, when you're doing them like this, which you often have to do for your front uh, recovery points because they're generally too difficult to get in for this angle. Um, over time and a lot of recoveries you can, um, some shackles can arc outwards on the bows and can cause some threading issues uh, so it's something to be aware of. The other thing is ease of use, yes, but only once you know the key which is once you tighten it up you always at least come back half a turn or full turn because when you apply pressure with your rope or your strap um, this will tighten that pin up and if you tightened it up to its, where it's tight uh, you might not be able to get it undone. So once you know that, it can be easy to use. The other point is we've got our recovery hitch here. Now you should never recover someone from a tow bowl uh, at all, ever. Um, it'll damage things. Uh, it may even fall off and result in uh, something going flying. Um, the other thing is when it's in this vertical position, it means that if I'm recovering people from a 45 or a 90 degree angle, uh, the bow shackle itself can rotate inside the block um, and the pressure is applied throughout the whole of the actual thing um, the actual um, casing of the the uh, tow bar area still applies pressure to, to the outside but this is weighted that way um, now this will come up all the time um, people say yes uh, you can use your pin to recover somebody if they don't have a ready recovery point Technically, yeah, you can. I've done it before. Um, just because you don't have a ready recovery point, I'm not going to just leave you stranded. I'll give you the option. Um, but as you'll see in the video in relation to the straps and the ropes, uh, if you're recovering someone from a pin, you can only really use the strap. Now, these aren't rated or designed for that purpose, so they can bend, break, and not, uh, not work. So just keep that in mind when you come to using those. But like I said, I wouldn't leave someone stranded. I would always help them out and give them the choice. Same with the front, I'd give them the choice in relation to using an equaliser strap. But we'll cover that when we look at the practical aspects of things. Uh, now I've sped all this up so I'm hopefully I've covered everything I need to to try and make this as short but as compact as possible covering all the details. So you can see both the benefits of having uh, um, the shot shackle, you can see what usefulness they have uh, and what situations they're best used for. I personally, and this is personal opinion, would probably buy two, shack two shackles like this to have with me um, in addition to my rated recovery point at the back just because one, they're not that expensive to have and keeping them there with your kit is useful and in certain situations I'll just stick with that but other situations as we talked about I'd use the, the soft shackles so even if you go for the light, just one um, at least you have that option of using these for some of the scenarios I've pointed above and some of the scenarios we'll encounter when we use these in, in the practical use. Um, so hopefully that sheds shed some light on uh, the straps and the bow shackles and clear up some of the pros and the cons and how they all work um, and some details. Hopefully that's been helpful. If it has, smash that uh, subscribe button and keep up to date with the next lot of videos and the whole series that we're going to go through because um, it's going to be really helpful to cover off a lot of material in relation to recoveries um, not only in relation to uh, recovery for just uh, using rated stuff um, but different styles and when you find someone that doesn't have rated stuff what do you do and, and certain ways about doing that so there's a lot of content coming up and we'll be testing all this stuff out in the practical set so, um, I'll leave it off there guys and I appreciate you guys for listening and hanging with us through all this and um, uh, if there's anything else that I missed hopefully I'll pick it up but otherwise uh, be sure to mention it and I'm happy to, to note those down but thank you very much again guys for listening and I'll catch you on the next video